Hello, and welcome to this course on paid traffic. In this course, we're going to cover how to increase your sales by leveraging paid traffic methods. This course is divided into three modules. Module one covers running Facebook ad campaigns. Module two covers search advertising campaigns on Google. And module three teaches you how to create and run banner ads. By the time this course is over, you'll know how to effectively funnel paid traffic to your business. So without further ado, let's dive into the first module. Okay guys, welcome to module one. In this module, our expert will cover running Facebook ad campaigns. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. All right, so when we first create our Facebook ad, we're gonna be prompted to choose a marketing objective. Now, there's a whole bunch of objectives to choose from here. Facebook has made it really easy based on your campaign goals to pick one. Let's just go through a few of these. Brand awareness. This is more about getting your image, your identity out there to as many people as possible and making sure that they're aware, top of mind, that your brand exists. It's not particularly tangible results driven, okay? It's mostly to ensure that your name, your identity is in the minds of people. Reach is very impression heavy. Okay. It's all about showing the ad visually to as many people as possible, not necessarily about getting them to go somewhere and take a specific action. Now these certainly have their place. They can be very useful if you're starting a company and you want to increase people's awareness of your brand. Most people are going to be doing Facebook ads in these two areas though. Now consideration includes as an umbrella sort of all of these different areas, traffic, the basic meat and potatoes concept of sending people to a web property, if you will. Engagement has to do with getting people to actually like or comment or respond to your ad in some way, shape or form, the actual post itself. App installs is self-explanatory. If you're doing an actual app, you want people to install it. Uh, video views. Uh, very self-explanatory here. However, it's important to point out, remember, these are just objectives. You're not necessarily choosing the type of ad. So you can have any of these ads be video ads, okay? But your goal is not necessarily to maximize video views in those. Whereas in this case, uh, by choosing this one, you'd be telling Facebook that's your goal is you want to go after as many people viewing your videos as possible. Lead generation, building your list, self-explanatory. Uh, messages, really tapping into Facebook's messenger ad abilities. Uh, conversions is a very popular one. Okay. As you get a little bit more advanced, you're going to be installing uh, tracking pixels on your web properties and actually optimizing your ads for conversions, specifically people taking the actions that you want them to take. Catalog sales is an interesting one, especially if you're in the e-commerce place, it'll automatically show items from your available collection of offerings uh, to your potential customers. And then store traffic literally has to do with foot traffic, people actually coming to a physical brick and mortar location. Eventually, eventually, you're most likely going to be focusing on conversions. Uh, if you go down the path of Facebook ads, let's start off since we're just starting from scratch and we want to keep things relatively basic. Let's just go with the meat and potatoes traffic objective. Now the special ad category box that pops up right here, if you're doing anything related to credit, employment, or housing, uh, there's special factors that need to be taken into consideration there. Uh, we're going to say no. In fact, we're going to say that we're uh, doing a diabetes uh, related product today, just for the sake of example. Uh, we're going to come down here. You can name your campaign. We'll just leave it as traffic. AB split testing is a very cool, more recent feature. Back in the day, you used to have to run a whole bunch of different ads, ad uh, groups and ad campaigns. And then you would have to do the math yourself, so to speak, comparing and contrasting the results of each of them. And now Facebook has built in A-B split testing abilities, which is very cool. And then campaign budget optimization is exactly what it sounds like. It's a little bit more of an advanced feature, which we're not going to touch right now. Let's head over to the next page. Now we can name our ad set here. We'll just leave it with the default naming convention here. There's a real science in terms of uh, naming conventions when you're creating uh, multiple ads or multiple ad sets within a campaign or multiple campaigns. Every company has their own uh, sort of process for naming things so that it becomes more uh, easy to analyze and manage their ads. For now, we'll just leave it with the default US 18 plus, which is uh, based on the default uh, demographic, which is United States and 
18 plus. Uh, dynamic creative is a very cool new concept. It has to do with actually personalizing ads for people who are seeing them based on who they are. Uh, skipped one here. Traffic. Uh, of course, we're just going for website traffic. We're not looking to do any of the cooler advanced stuff with WhatsApp, Messenger, or sending people to a mobile app or something like that. Uh, very cool stuff. We're going to stick with the, the bare bones sending traffic to a website for now. Uh, then we've got this one here. Another of the more newer features that Facebook has come out with uh, where you can actually create an offer that people can save and then get reminded about inside of their Facebook account later on. We'll leave that set to off as well. So now we're really getting into the core of the ad. Um, we don't have any existing audiences, so we're going to create our own custom audience from scratch here. Uh, location, uh, self-explanatory, you can really get into the weeds and, uh, you know, get all the way down to uh, specific counties in the United States if you wanted to. Uh, you could uh, create basically uh, a certain mile radius around a specific pin on the map if you wanted to, if you really knew your audience that well. The uh, demographic that we're going after with uh, a diabetes product, however, uh, just to stick with our example, it probably applies nationwide, so there's no reason to drill any deeper than that. Uh, let's say that we had demographic information, though, about age. Let's say that, uh, based on our research, the people most likely to purchase a product in this category, people struggling with uh, weight and diabetes and so on and so forth, are 30 plus. We would choose uh, the age right here. Uh, genders. If we wanted to focus one campaign on males and one campaign on females because of, let's say, the images that we'll be using in our ads or data that we saw that uh, indicates that women are more likely to purchase this type of product, so on and so forth. All of this kind of depends on doing your audience research, doing your due diligence and all that before you start creating the ad. We'll go ahead and go with women just so we can see what the impact is on audience size. And then we'll move into detailed targeting. Now this has to do with choosing specific interests, uh, behaviors, demographics, based on all the data that Facebook has curated on each of its users. It's kind of a scary amount of data, but it's very, very valuable to you as a marketer. You could browse based on broad topics, um, regarding interests and demographics, education levels, uh, you know, data about parents, um, behaviors, uh, purchasing behaviors, uh, you know, how much money people make, that kind of stuff. Uh, but in our case, let's go straight into looking for people who are interested in diabetes. There's a good chance if they've interacted with this type of content on Facebook before, they're going to be very interested in this topic. So let's go ahead and go with this, uh, looks like type two awareness topic. All right, now we can see we've narrowed down based on our age, our location, our gender, and that one interest, we've narrowed it down to 5,400,000 potential people who could see our ad in the future. And we could theoretically drill down even further if we wanted to. In this case, let's go ahead and expand the audience, uh, American Diabetes Association. That could add, there's probably some overlap there, so you won't see a big increase. Okay, but it did add a, a good chunk of people there. And then if you wanted to, beyond that, you could narrow the audience by using and logic. So you could come over here and let's say uh, dieting. Let's say that we wanted people who fit this category, so the 5,700,000 who have these two interests, but we also want them to be interested in gluten-free diets. So that narrowed it down to 1,800,000. So rather than just adding this up here, which would have used or logic, meaning anybody who's interested in this or this or this, by narrowing, using the narrowing option, it's and logic, which means it must also match this. So they have to be in this category and, or one of these two categories, and have this interest as well. So it's a great way to sort of narrow down your audience. We're not doing a gluten-free diet product. We're going to pretend for the sake of this example that we are selling, uh, let's say, uh, glucose, blood glucose monitors. Okay. And uh, we're actually happy with this. This is actually a good, large, sizable, very well targeted chunk of the United States that we can show our ad to. Now, continuing on down here to placements, um, Facebook is pretty smart. It understands where people are most likely to click on ads and 
you know, where your ads might perform really well. It gets more smart the more ads you've actually had and the more of an audience that you've interacted with with your ads on Facebook. You know, it slowly starts to learn and so on and so forth. For this one, since we're starting from scratch and we just want to show off the, uh, the options here, let's go ahead and specify that we only want it to appear in people's uh, Facebook news feeds okay as a native ad so we're gonna basically turn off everything here except for Facebook news feed we'll turn off all the stories related stuff we'll turn off the in-stream video ads turn off the search result ads uh, messages are already turned off in article ads turned off and all the apps and sites options are turned off as well and so now we literally just have just have the news feed add as our only place where it's going to show up and we can come on down here and now let's talk about the different budget and scheduling options so there's four different optimization options that are going to kind of broadly affect how facebook shows your ads to how many people per day and, and that sort of things um, we're going to go with uh, landing page views okay we want people who are more likely to click and actually wait for the website or the landing page the lead page whatever it is to load and actually look at your page link clicks is really all about the clicks it's not very much concerned with what happens what the traffic does after it gets to your site daily unique reach is going to limit the amount of times that someone sees your ad to once per day and then impressions just means show it to as many people as possible make it you know technically a, a view uh, in their news feed, even if they didn't really stop and look at it too much, they just kind of scrolled through the news feed. You, you want to make sure that they see it as much as possible in their news feed. Uh, you would optimize for impressions. We're going to go with landing page views here. Cost control is uh, a useful feature if you've really mapped out and done the math on your uh, marketing campaign. Let's say you figured out your average order value for someone who comes through your funnel, and based on that, you figured out you know how much you uh, make per uh, lead who becomes a customer and you figured out what your conversion rates are and that sort of gives you an idea of how much you can spend or afford to spend in order to make someone turn into a lead and how much you can afford to spend per visitor to your site and let's say that based on all that data you know that you can only afford to spend three dollars per person you could put that number right here and ensure that Facebook does not charge uh, more than that amount per landing page view Budget and schedule here, uh, there's a very important distinction to make, and that is that your daily budget doesn't literally mean that only $20 will be spent. Some days you might spend 30 some days you might spend 10 What it means is that over the course of the lifetime of the ad, the total amount spent during the lifetime of the ad will only equal an average of 20 per day when you average it out okay so the actual amount that you spend per day here might actually vary and just be aware of that and here it will actually tell you that per week it'll cap out at uh, 140. so let's go ahead and click continue let's say we're happy with our targeting and then the placement of our ad and all that good stuff let's hit continue that'll actually bring us to the ad creative portion of this whole journey here um, we're going to create an ad from scratch because it's our first time and we've got three to choose from here because of the placement options that we chose we chose news feed only if you'll recall and these are the three options that we've got which include carousel which is basically images or videos uh, multiple per ad that people can swipe or scroll through we've got the collection one which is a more advanced uh, full screen mobile experience with a whole bunch of uh, items that you can add to one ad then you've got the single image or single video which is what we are going to be going with and we can come over here to add media to choose that image and the whole idea behind an image really is to stop the scroll you're not really trying to put a whole bunch of information or text into the image it's not like a newspaper ad or a banner ad in the strict sense or in the traditional sense uh, in fact uh, Facebook will actually penalize you for putting too much uh, text into your ads you really just want to use the ad image to get people to stop and notice the ad you know stop swiping while they're going through their news feed and so on and so forth uh, and then the copy okay the actual text of your post uh, does the job of selling okay so not the image now we're going to go ahead and use the built-in stock photo search which uh, we're allowed to use here inside of Facebook ads powered by uh, Shutterstock and let's go ahead and just type in diabetes and see if we can find something relevant and look at that we've got multiple relevant images I'm pretty sure this one here is an image of 
a glucose, blood glucose uh, monitor. And so let's go ahead and say that that's what that is and choose that image there. And it'll show us that it'll show us a preview of what it looks like both on desktop and mobile newsfeed right here and now we're really getting into the actual selling okay so the primary text of the ad the actual ad copy we've got the description which is optional okay a small uh, amount of text which appears underneath the headlines so if we were to put that here you know It basically acts uh, in, a, in a certain way as a sub headline underneath your main headline. Uh, your headline here could be new glucose monitor. And then you'd put all of your uh, sales copy about your uh, product right here. Hopefully you'll figure out what your sales copy is before you even start creating the ad. I'm just going to paste some generic tech about uh, what to look for in a blood glucose monitor here and we'll pretend that that's uh you know legitimate ad copy for now and then of course you've got the actual url so let's say https uh, glucose diabetes Dot com, which don't go there. That might actually be a real site, so uh, not an endorsement of that product if it does exist. <laughs> um, and now let's check out our finalized uh, preview images here. So this is what it looked like on the desktop news feed, which you've probably seen this type of thing a thousand times. Looks like just a regular native post, but you've got the little sponsored thing there and the uh, learn more buttons right here. And your call to action, by the way, can change if you want to change it to apply now or book now or watch or you know contact us or something along those lines uh, sign up subscribe lots of options uh, there and uh, we'll just leave it with the default learn more and then uh, you've got your uh, tracking pixels that you want to associate this with um, we're going to pretend that we're not using one yet since we're starting out from scratch here but ideally you would uh, go into your facebook uh, ads manager and grab your tracking pixel and have that on all of your relevant pages so you can track uh, basically the uh, uh, behavior and analyze uh, what your traffic is doing once they click on this ad and go to your web properties and that is pretty much it our ad is ready to go so we've got the ad creative the sales copy we've got our placement selected we've got the uh, budgeting and all that good stuff the targeting uh, figured out we're targeting a, a chunk of the u.s population um, focusing on uh, females who have an interest in diabetes related content and are if i recall it was age 30 plus and we could hit confirm here and our ad would go out there into people's news feeds and start bringing us some traffic so that's it for facebook ads let's move into the next module where we're going to be looking at search advertising Hey folks, welcome to module two. In this module, our expert will cover search advertising campaigns on Google. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. All right, so when we first create a Google ad campaign, we're going to be asked to choose a goal. Now a goal is not a campaign type or an ad type. There's several different types. In fact, if you hover over, you'll see under each one down here, there's several types of campaign types or types of ads that can correspond with these goals. The whole purpose of choosing a goal is so that Google knows by what metric, by what measure you're going to judge the success of your campaign. What are you really going after here? Do you want people to buy things? That would be sales. Do you want people to opt in and, and build a, a list? That would be leads. Website traffic. All you care about is clicks and visitors to a web property product and brand consideration here, just encouraging people to look further at your offerings, uh, brand awareness and reach, just getting your identity and your brand and your image out there in front of as, as many people as possible so that they're aware, they've got that top of mind awareness that you exist. Then you've got app promotion, which is specifically uh, tied into getting people to download and install an app. And then you've got uh, create a campaign without a goals guidance. Now, this is not really advised unless you're a little bit more advanced and you know Google ads like the back of your hand. It's best to choose one of these presets uh, when you're starting out here.
So we're going to say we're going after sales. Okay, we want people to buy. We'll stick with the example from the previous module. Let's say we're selling a diabetes related product. We want people to buy that product, click through and, and purchase. Now for this module, all we really care about is search. Display, shopping, video, smart ads, discovery ads, these are all really great. There's a whole lot of potential here inside of the Google Ads uh, universe. But we're going to focus on search ads, which means literally those things that look like search results at the very top of the search results page, but they say ad or sponsored right underneath them. Now, what we're focusing on for reaching our goal is going to be website visits. Let's say we're doing e-com. We're not actually looking for people to show up at a physical address. We're not looking for people to you know, call our business and we're not looking for app downloads. So for this, we'll put in our website, which I've just made this up, diabetesbegone.com. We'll hit continue. I don't know if that's a real website or not. And here we have an option under networks to choose just search or search with a little bit of display network, which will basically take your textual ads and display them in the place of display network ads around the internet. Uh, we're going to turn that one off. It has its merits, but we're trying to stay nice and simple and focused just on search engine result pages uh, for this example that we're doing. Uh, locations to target, let's say United States and Canada. Okay, if we wanted to, we could really drill down, we could uh, do some geo-targeting, use radiuses and, you know, put pins in the map and then that sort of thing, states, cities. Uh, we really, really get very refined here, but we're just going to go with North America here, okay? Now, United States and Canada. Um, we're going to go with uh, English as our language. We're going to deselect French, okay? Uh, I think it automated. Uh, automatically went with French because we chose Canada, and that's one of the, the main languages up there. Uh, audiences. Um, we don't have existing audiences in this scenario, okay? If you did have audiences, you could incorporate those into your ad campaign in various ways, um, and that's based on you know, retargeting pixels and audiences that, you, that you've built and customized and saved in the past. Since we're kind of starting from scratch, we're going to pretend we don't have any audiences, and we're just going to, you know, attract our, our audience and our, our target market to our website to buy our product for the first time from scratch. Now, it's important to understand that this here is a monthly figure under budget. So what this means is, on average, you'll spend this each day based on the total that's spent over the course of a month. Does that kind of make sense? So if you put 10 here, you could be seeing numbers like $20 per day some days and $5 a day other days. But it will average out to this amount per day total by the end of a month. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're uh, setting your budget and don't be surprised if this actually fluctuates up and down um, from one day to the next. Now bidding, you can choose multiple options for what you want to focus on. Uh, conversions is recommended because that's the most important thing. You want people to take a specific action, right? And the best way to uh, actually gauge this is to ensure that you've got your pixels and, and all that good stuff on your websites. So your web developer will be given a little snippet of code that you can put on your pages and uh, you want to uh, focus the bidding on people who are most likely to convert and successfully take a desired action on your web property rather than just sending clicks to your website. Okay. Although that's also an option as well, depending on your goals. Okay. So this campaign is going to use the maximize conversions bid strategy to help you get the most conversions out of your budget, just like it says right there. Now, the next couple options here are a little bit more advanced. You've probably seen these in the results on a Google search engine results page. Um, for example, you've got uh, sub pages underneath a main website result. You've got other pages, you know, for say help or pricing or something like that. Uh, links that you can click on within the ad. Uh, sometimes there'll be a phone number there that you can click on and digitally call someone right there from inside of the ad on the search engine results page. So those are pretty cool. We're not going to mess with those right now, although they are proven, as you can see, uh, to get higher click-through rates when you add these features. But we're going to stay sort of bare bones as we move through this for this example. Now, the next step here is going to be to set up your ad groups with keywords that you're targeting for these search advertising campaigns. Now we went with diabetesbegone.com and it actually started uh, pulling keywords uh, based on that domain. Now the reality is, we don't have to look it up, but as you can see, there is no diabetes related website at that domain. And so instead it's just giving us domain hosting related stuff that it found when, when it crawled and went to that URL. There's probably one of those uh, parked sites there uh, with the GoDaddy or some other registrar saying, hey, 
you can buy this domain if you want or something along those lines. So we don't really want to focus on this too much. In fact, let's get rid of this so that it's no longer considered. Now let's just type in uh, glucose monitor. Blood glucose. Let's go with those two keywords first. And now let's try monitor. Let's see what we come up with. So basically, Google is going to be recommending okay certain uh, keywords that might result in uh, people you know who are looking for your product finding your product you can add as many of these as you want to that ad group and that particular ad group is going to focus on those keywords you could also create a new ad group here if you wanted to and with that new ad group you could go out and do your own keyword research inside of the google keyword planner for example where you could take words like this and it'll tell you on average on a monthly basis how often people search for those keywords and you can sort of prioritize which ones you want to stick into which ad group based on that information but right here i think we have enough to go with uh, to move forward so let's move on to actually creating the ad itself and this little uh, box right here just means that it wants us to use the uh, most secure version of the url as possible and um, i've got some pre-written copy here that we can stick into the ad and we'll see it change right here as we stick these things into these respective fields and you gotta pay close attention to characters here as you can see that one's actually a little bit too long so it's 30 seconds per little segment of your headline here uh, 30 words, I should say, excuse me. And they have uh, expanded it quite a bit. Uh, there's a third headline option now. There, there's uh, You can have two description uh, copy lines there if you want. So they have gotten a little bit uh, beefier over the last year or so. But that is pretty much it. That's our successful ad. Okay, you've got the final URL that they're going to be going to, which is displayed in the ad itself, right next to the word ad. You've got the headlines, which are you know, really where you're trying to get people's attention and call people out in the blue letters there. And you've got the description underneath. As you can see, it looks very much like a search engine result. This is the desk desktop version. It looks just like a search engine result, uh, except the word ad is right there and uh, you're paying money to make sure that people actually see it instead of having it down on page you know 5001 so we'll hit save and continue here and we'll hit save and this will bring us to our summary page where we can have a look at all of the uh, different data about our campaign and confirm that we're okay with everything and that we're ready to go forward we would hit continue to campaign and then basically our ad would be live from which point on we can uh, analyze and, and uh, assess which keywords are performing best and remove some and focus more on the ones that are performing better uh, that sort of thing uh, monitor you know items like your average cost per click as well as your conversion rates and uh, it's a good thing to keep an eye on in the early days so you can make sure that your ad is shaping up to produce the results and the return on investment um, that you're hoping to get out of uh, putting money into google ads now in the next module we're going to be revisiting Google Ads, but this time for banner ads after we've gone through the process of creating a banner ad creative. All right, welcome to module three. In this module, our expert will teach you how to create and run banner ads. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. All right, so our first stop when creating a banner ad is going to be Banner Snack. Banner Snack is an awesome cloud based software where you can create multiple banners in different sizes and dimensions all at once. After clicking Create New, it's going to give us two options make a design or generate set. We're going to choose generate set. That way we can crank out a whole bunch of different sizes and dimensions without having to individually create each one from scratch. Now animated is very cool. You can use HTML5 technology to have elements on your ads move around while you're creating them. The whole creation process is mostly the same with the exception of adding animations. For example, you want this picture to swoop in from the left and the text to come up from the bottom, that sort of thing. It's very self-explanatory. We're going to stick with static since most banner ads do tend to be static. And we'll choose start with static and we will pick the different sizes that we want uh, for our banner ad campaign. So let's go with medium rectangle, large rectangle, square, and portrait. And let's throw in wide skyscraper too, just so we can see how it turns out. 
We'll go to Next. And we could start with one of these templates, which are actually pretty cool, but let's actually build this one from scratch. Just to give you a better, more thorough experience with the whole design process. So the first thing we're going to need is sort of a core image. Now I've got an image here. I'm going to come over to new layer and add. Actually, we'll come up here to my uploads and we'll grab the image from here. And this is just an image of a gal who clearly has some uh, weight loss elements in there. So you got the apple for healthy eating. You got the, uh, you know, measuring tape for weight loss, all that good stuff. So this is a good general generic weight loss image that we can use for our banner ad. And as you can see, it's already put in the ads for us. All we have to do is individually move her around just a little bit. So in the, uh, well, it can continue the next step there. Uh, let's see. Let's generally say that we want her on the bottom edge of each ad. So we have to move her around less and we'll go ahead and apply and continue. We could theoretically move forward from here, but let's go ahead and offset her a little bit. So for this one, let's move her over here and let's increase the size a little bit. So crop and zoom and all that good stuff. And come back over here. We'll do the same thing here. A little bit bigger off to the left a little bit. Same thing here, a little bit bigger. It's a little bit too big, actually, for that size. There we go. And for these ones here, I think these are actually pretty good. We could make her fill up a little bit more of the space if we wanted to. But I think it looks okay as it is. Now, the next element is going to be text, right? So we'll come over here, new layer, and we'll put a headline here. And you know what? We'll just say uh, something kind of generic like time to lose some weight. We will apply and customize. And what we'll do is we'll make this, let's say, red. Okay, everything else looks okay. So now let's get into uh, individually adjusting the position inside of each ad. That works for me. We'll come out of here. Same thing over here. Same thing here. And same thing there. And finally, it's a good idea to add a call to action of some sort. So we'll just have a button and we'll make it, uh, let's say, bright blue. And we'll write, let's say, click here, pretty standard call to action. Continue to the next step. And we'll put it at the bottom of each ad. And we will apply and customize. If we wanted to, we could go through here and sort of move it off into a better position for each ad, which might be a good idea for some of them. Not really necessary for all of them because it doesn't look too bad. It contrasts with the background enough that that actually looks just fine. Um, so I think we're good here. So let's go ahead and save all. We'll call it wait one okay hit save and then we can come here when we're back at the dashboard click download 
And since we didn't really do the animated thing, these ones don't really apply to us. Uh, we'll just go with JPEG. We'll download those, and now we can move them into our Google uh, Display Ad that we're going to create inside of Google Ads. So let's go ahead and click New. And we'll click on New Campaign. And this time, let's say uh, we want to go for just website traffic. Okay, get people to a, a diet or fitness related landing page. And this time, instead of choosing search, we're going to go with display because we have a banner ad, right? Three options to choose from. We can do uh, display ads that actually show inside of people's Gmail accounts. Uh, we have smart display campaigns, which take a whole bunch of dynamic uh, variables into account. And then we just have the standard one. We'll do standard for now. And then this time uh, we'll use the same URL as last time. I'll just paste that here and continue. And we've kind of already been through this process uh, in the previous module. Um, same basic thing, right? You can target pretty much anywhere in the world. We'll go with just the United States for this one. Uh, target any languages. Uh, focus on anything. Uh, in our case, we want to focus on conversions, which is always a good idea. Automatically maximize conversions versus manually setting your bids, which uh, if you are more familiar with Google Ads and you understand uh, the, the math and the concepts behind it, you're a little bit more advanced, certainly uh, do it manually. Also, if you understand the math of uh, your sales funnel, okay, let's say it's not a new sales funnel, you've got a whole bunch of data existing on this sales funnel, you understand the initial order value, the average cart value of everybody who comes through, and so you understand how much you can afford to spend per conversion, and so on. Uh, you could certainly adjust that, but we'll just stick with automatically maximize conversions and let Google do the uh, heavy uh, lifting math-wise. And let's see, our budget, daily budget, I'll reiterate like I did in the previous module, this does not mean a cap on what you'll spend every day, rather it means that this will be the average you have spent over the course of a month. So take this number and multiply it by 30 and that's basically what you're telling Google you can spend over the next 30 days, okay? But the actual daily amount might fluctuate up or down from this number. Now down here in the ad group portion, what we can try and do is uh, search for people who are interested in losing weight. And remember, this is not uh, like the search ad that we did in the previous module. We're not targeting specific keywords, so we're actually Instead of waiting for people to come to us, looking for what we have to offer, the whole context has changed with the display ad here. Now we're going out and finding people based on maybe past indications to Google of their interests and bringing them to us, letting them know that we're here. So we have to actively uh, go in here and, and figure out who it exact it is exactly who we are uh, targeting. So we could come over here to, uh, let's say, sports and fitness for example, um, could be useful to target people in the food and dining realm. Let's go with sports and fitness and see what kind of subgroups. Okay, so we've got the health and fitness buffs sports group here, okay, which gives us a pretty significant and uh, sizable potential you know, range of, of impressions in the United States. I'll go ahead and come down here now to uh, demographics. Um, just like with the Facebook ad, if we had existing customer research or audience research about our target market, uh, let's say we wanted to focus primarily on females with this one, since we have a female in the ad, for example, uh, we want to rule out these age groups because our customer research uh, tells us that these are the ones that are a little bit more hot when it comes to uh, interest in diet and fitness and uh, parental status and household income don't really matter so we could leave that the way it is there and we could also use this feature here where Google will actually uh, based on what you said above uh, it will actually expand your reach by trying to uh, find uh, audiences that are similar to the targetings uh, targeting settings that you uh, set above, which may or may not be worth it. Next is uh, the actual ad itself. We're going to upload some display ads. Actually, the first thing we should do is grab them and bring them out of the zip file that we downloaded from Banner Snack. Get that out of the way. Upload display ads, and we'll go to Choose Files to Upload. 
And let's go ahead and find There we go. There's our folder. And let's grab all of these open. All right. There's our five ads. And again, we have that warning about the secure version of the URL. Okay, so we've got that. And there we go. We've got five different banner ads in different dimensions. So these will be able to go into different, you know, uh, a variety of spots on websites that utilize Google's uh, display network. And uh, we'll be able to get this in front of some people who are interested in losing some weight. We'll go ahead and click Create Campaign. And that'll bring us to the summary page, just like last time. We can review all the different parameters of our ads. And now we can go to continue campaign and monitor the results as they start to come in.